Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Biochemistry Concepts. This video is about the most important metabolic defect in HMP pathway that is deficiency of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Normally this glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase converts glucose 6-phosphate into 6-phosphogluconolactone with the generation of one molecule of NADPH. Now coming to the characteristics of G6PD deficiency. So G6PD means glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. It is X-linked recessive disorder, mainly affects males. Hemolytic anemia is the most important feature of G6PD deficiency. And there are 400 different types of mutations that are seen in this gene which codes for glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. But only some mutations they show the clinical symptoms and in addition to hemolytic anemia g6pd deficiency also leads to neonatal jaundice that is seen after one to four days of birth so the lifespan of individuals with g6pd deficiency is shortened g6pd deficiency has an advantage in survival that is G6PD patients, they have increased resistance to malaria, so shown by female carriers of the mutation. So like uh, sickle cell anemia and thalassemia, which have resistance to the malaria, same way G6PD deficiency patients, they also show resistance to malaria. Now we will see the reason for the hemolytic anemia due to G6PD deficiency in a sequence. So here, Normally, as we discussed, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase converts glucose 6-phosphate into 6-phosphogluconolactone, which generates NADPH. Uh, this is the important molecule which is actually responsible for this hemolytic anemia. Not because of present, it is because of lack of NADPH which leads to hemolytic anemia. So, coming to the reason, so whenever this enzyme is blocked or deficiency is there, then it leads to decreased production of NADPH. So this NADPH is normally required for the conversion of oxidized glutathione that is represented as GSSG to reduced glutathione that is GSH. So NADPH is required for the conversion of GSSG to GSH. So due to deficiency of this, it leads to decreased production of reduced glutathione. So whenever that happens, it leads to increased oxidative stress. So, the norm, in normal cellular metabolism, free radicals are produced within a cell like hydrogen peroxide. So, this hydrogen peroxide is detoxified normally by glutathione that is reduced glutathione. But because of deficiency of NADPH, these oxidative agents like hydrogen peroxide, they cannot be detoxified. So, that leads to accumulation of hydrogen peroxide within a cell, particularly RBC are affected because RBCs they do not have any other mechanism to produce NADPH so that's why these are the most vulnerable tissues. Now due to accumulated oxidative agents it leads to decreased RBC membrane stability so the integrity of RBC membrane is affected due to these oxidative agents accumulation. So whenever the membrane stability is decreased it leads to increased RBC lysis that is increased hemolysis. So that increased hemolysis results in anemia, we call it as hemolytic anemia. So these are the sequence of events that leads to hemolytic anemia due to deficiency of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Now coming to classification of G6PD variants. So how these variants are formed? So as we discussed, the gene which codes for G6PD has 400 different types of mutations. So because of that, different variants are formed and those are classified into these four types. These are the abnormal types where affinity of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase towards the substrate is decreased. Class 1, the symptoms of this class 1 variants are very severe, which is chronic hemolytic anemia is seen here. And whatever enzyme that is present, its activity is less than 10% of normal enzyme activity. Class 2, here the symptoms are severe. Episodic hemolytic anemia is the feature of this class 2 variants. 
So here also the enzyme activity is less than 10 percent. Class 3, here the clinical symptoms are moderate, moderate hemolytic anemia I see and the residual enzyme activity, whatever enzyme that is present, its activity is in the range of 10 to 60 percent of the normal. Class 4, symptoms are not seen here because the residual enzyme activity is greater than 60 percent. So in such conditions, symptoms are not seen normal. So this is about the classification of G6PD variants. Coming to precipitating factors in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. So generally most individuals who have inherited this G6PD mutation, they do not show any clinical manifestations. So most of the individuals are asymptomatic. However, some patients with G6PD deficiency develop hemolytic anemia. So if they are treated with oxidant drugs or ingest pava beans or severe infection it leads to hemolytic anemia. Now we'll see in brief about each precipitating factor which is responsible for hemolytic anemia. Coming to the commonly used drugs that produce hemolytic anemia in patients with G6PD deficiency are so they can be given a mnemonic AAA triple A where A is anti-malarial and the drug which causes this one is primarquin. Second A is antibiotics. Example is sulfamethoxazole. And third A is antipyretic, which is estanilate. So these antimalarial antibiotics and antipyretics, if they are given to the patient who is already having this enzyme deficiency, it leads to oxidative stress that is responsible for hemolytic anemia. Now coming to hemolytic anemia because of Fava beans, so that is called as the favism. Meaning of favism is hemolytic effect of fava beans. So some forms of G6 PD deficiency are they are susceptible to the hemolytic effect of fava beans. Mostly this is seen in the Mediterranean region. Coming to the third precipitating factor and the most common type of factor that is responsible for hemolysis in G6 PD deficiency cases. That is severe infection. So whenever severe infection is there in these cases, it leads to inflammatory response. So inflammatory response results in the generation of free radicals in the macrophages. So these free radicals will diffuse into RBC and they cause oxidative damage and hemolysis. So that results in the hemolytic anemia.